first story is titled Am I the a-hole for telling my in-laws to F off since they don't want to put in the effort? A year and three months ago, my husband and I took custody of his sister's three kids, Josh 8, Eliza 7, and Cole 6. Names are fake, but I wanted to make this easier to write out. My husband and I also have two kids together, Ella 7 and Micah 5. My in-laws were also spoken to about taking in their grandkids, but they did not feel like I could, and neither did the kids' paternal aunt, so my husband and I took them in. It has been rough. They were taken off their parents because the parents were not sending them to school. But outside of that, they were feeding them badly, not enforcing any bedtime or any kind of structure. My sister-in-law and her husband refused to comply with sending them to school, and after lengthy intervention from CPS, they were removed from the home. So, when we got the kids, it had been many months since they had been to school. They had never eaten a vegetable and never had a bedtime that they could remember. And it has been hard. They still hate school, and I ended up needing to drive them to school because they would run from the bus stop. They still don't want to eat anything but food they were used to with their parents. And homework is not easy or fun. But I am determined to do what I can. So is my husband. They are in therapy twice a week, etc. My in-laws started complaining about their lack of progress during lockdown. They would ask how schoolwork was going from home and how their diet was, etc. And they would blame me when they were told very little had changed. They blamed me because I'm the one who stays at home. I'm the one who is active most in the normal 9-to-5 setting. My husband is active and involved and a great parent, but we need him to work. We started ignoring my in-laws after they refused to listen when my husband told them to stop blaming me. He told them we would be happy for them to help, but if not, they needed to be quiet. But they are not finished. And I had a bad day recently, and then my mother-in-law showed up at our house and announced to tell me I'm doing a bad job, and I lost it a little. I told her to F off and keep her opinion to herself when she wasn't willing to step up and put the effort in to help the kids. I told her I was putting the effort in and was doing all I could, and I was following the advice of the therapists, and she was being a judgmental jerk. She was not happy, and my husband got a long email about my behavior. I feel a little bad for snapping, and at the same time, I'm so frustrated. They never want to help out, and yet they treat me like crap and accuse me of not doing a good enough job. It's already hard juggling everything without that on top of it all. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Well, now you know something about how your sister-in-law became the kind of mother who gets her kids taken away by CPS. Your mother-in-law is attacking you because she probably feels guilty for raising this person who turned out this way, and because she didn't step up herself. Normally, I would say it's rude to tell your mother-in-law to F off, but under these circumstances, I wholly support your choice of verbiage. Not day haul. I definitely agree with you. OP is doing everything they can to help these children. I find it completely in the right to ignore and tell the mother-in-law to leave them alone. The sister-in-law lost her children for a reason, and mother-in-law shouldn't be judging Opie for a problem that originally came from sister-in-law's own negligent actions. Not day hall. It sounds like you and your husband are doing the best you can with the situation, and I applaud the two of you for stepping up and taking this all on. We are. It's not easy trying to juggle everything, but we want the best for the kids. The fact my in-laws don't think I do, stung at first. And now it just pisses me off because they have no idea how invested I am in these kids' well-beings and their future. Not day hall. Sounds like it's time to cut some limbs off the family tree. I'm just trying to imagine that email. I came to your house to tell your wife she's not doing things correctly. And when I kept telling her how trash she is, she got upset. The nerve. How dare she. I sure won't be providing surprise negative parenting classes anymore since you don't appreciate them. Like, what? Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling my sister her top choice baby name was a stupid ass name and that she should change it unless she wanted him to get bullied? My sister is pregnant, and as the due date is approaching, she's asking people for some feedback on the baby's name. She's mighty proud of the alternative and creative name she's chosen. Now, I am a pretty tolerant person. I don't have much of a temper, but when I see a parent making a stupid choice and making a kid's life hell in the future, you can bet your butt I'll do something about it. I waited till I was asked since, overall, it kind of wasn't my business, and to some extent, I didn't give a crap. 
I mean, how alternative can one's name be, right? No. She's naming the kid Crayon. Crayon. Like the freaking thing we used to draw with in third grade. What? Okay, like, sure, a little kid called Crayon might be cute. Still weird in my opinion. But imagine a 42-year-old man called Crayon. Imagine introducing your boyfriend Crayon to your parents. <clears throat> Imagine having freaking crayon on your application form. <laughs> <It's too stuck. clears throat> Imagine having freaking crayon on your application form and tombstone. She asked me what I thought of my nephew's name, and I said I wasn't enthusiastic about it. She kept going on and on about how creative it was, and how she was so happy she thought it up. I was like, bruh. But she kept going on, and when she suggested she help me name a kid in the future, I couldn't hold back. I told her it was a stupid name and that she was asking for him to get bullied in the future. I said she should look into other names since it wasn't on any paper yet. She got upset, told me she didn't need my negative energy, and she posted a long rant on Facebook about how hostile I was. My mom told me to apologize and support her, and my family is saying I'm a rude person and that the world is not as hateful as you. That's what my mom said. Am I the hole? Now for the top comments. Not Dayhull. Crayon is a terrible name. I've heard some awful ones as an early childhood teacher. Paddock is one that I still remember. Vector, like the despicable me villain. Tub. See Lena. Cherry Heaven. But Crayon is the sort of name that would make even the most professional and non-judgmental teacher go, Oh, really? That's an interesting name. Once, we got a post about a mother naming her twin daughter Angel and a son Demon. Not Damien or Damon. Straight up Demon. But honestly, Crayon tops everything else. What possessed her to choose that name? Not Dayhall. That name is so bad that you'd actually be the A-Hall if you didn't do everything in your powers to stop it from happening. It sounds like there was no stopping the sister from naming her kid Crayon. Opie could try to explain all the jokes that this kid will probably go through growing up. But if the sister does go through the name Crayon, I guarantee the child probably changed their name when they turn 18. I can imagine kids joking, where's the blue crayon, looking over at the nephew wearing blue shirt. Kids are cruel. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for making my mom cry when she called my child retarded? I, 38 male, have a daughter, 11, who was recently diagnosed with autism. We thought it would be wise to tell this to my aunt, in-laws and my parents, just so they can be expectant of any complications. My daughter frequently goes to her aunt's to see her cousin on a Thursday since they lived only about 15 minutes from where we did. Sometimes we'll leave my daughter with my in-laws or sometimes we'll leave them with my parents. This is just in case you wanted to know. I have to start by saying that my mom is the type of person who hates being told that she's wrong. My dad would often lose arguments with her when I was younger because she'd cry or throw a toddler level tantrum and it was honestly just tiring for him. As I became an adult, she became more dependent on me and would repeat the waterworks treatment she did with my dad if I refused to do something for her or tell her she was wrong in something. Essentially, to my mom, my telling her she is wrong is equivalent to murdering somebody in public. Anyway, main story. We informed my aunt and in-laws about my daughter's autism. They were pretty understanding of it. The real problem started with my mom. When we got around to informing my parents, my dad was okay, but my mom got upset, asking me why I didn't find this out earlier. I honestly don't know how to respond to that as I wasn't even sure if that was a rational question. But then she continued saying that a child that is crazy will be tough to raise, and I should probably give her up for adoption. I told her I wasn't going to do that, and she blew a fuse. She told me that I was being ridiculous, and that I would end up being a bad parent, and that she did not want a retarded grandchild. I saw red. Admittedly, it was hard for me not to lose it when she made that adoption and crazy comment, but I lost it. I told her that she was a freaking cruel piece of fish, and she always has been, and that she can't comment on my parenting style when her parenting was less than terrible. She burst into tears, asking me how I could be so horrible to her after everything she has done for me. I point-blank told her, You've never done Jack. My daughter was in her room watching cartoons on her tablet so she couldn't hear me, and I hung up. Now, I'm wondering if I went too far, 
because my dad called me to tell me that I should apologize to my mom in order to keep the peace. A lot of my family members on my mom's side are telling me to just be the bigger person and that my grandfather had Asperger's and mistreated her as a child, so that's why she may have said that. My wife agrees there's no excuse to what she said and that I shouldn't apologize, but I don't know. So lay it out thick, Reddit. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. If you ever allow her around your child again, you will not only be an a-hole, you'll be a failure as a parent. I agree. OP, don't leave your daughter with them ever again. Go no contact if necessary. And don't apologize. Not the a-hole. There is no excuse for what she said. I don't care who mistreated her as a child. She's a full-grown adult now who's responsible for herself. If I was in your position, she would never see my daughter again. And I don't say things like this lightly, but she literally told you to give your daughter up for adoption just because of her health issues. That's unforgivable. Exactly. Not the a-hole. I'm autistic. Albeit high-functioning. And once anybody says something negative about an autistic person, or that it's their fault or whatever, really just freaking pisses me off. Even after 30 years of understanding and spreading the knowledge, people still don't understand what it really is or what it means to have it and live with it. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not punishing my daughter for mocking her cousin? My wife and her younger sister are best friends. As a result, when our middle daughter and her cousin were born around the same time, my wife really expected them to also be best friends. With 16 years of hindsight, I can say with certainty that the expectation was misplaced. Nothing happened in particular. My daughter just doesn't like her cousin. My wife keeps pushing the relationship. This includes making my daughter spend time with her cousin during family gatherings, inviting her cousin on trips, forcing my daughter to call her. We're pretty sure I'm the favorite parent, a fact that keeps my ego well inflated. And therefore, my apathy towards the situation is not well received by my wife. From my perspective, this isn't important, and I do not possess the ability to make two teenagers become friends. I'm also pretty sure that trying to push this kind of knuckle-headed stuff makes kids not want to speak to you. This is where I'm probably an a-hole. Yesterday, my wife forced my daughter to video call her cousin. My daughter rejected the request, and my wife told her, unless you have a valid reason for disliking your cousin, you will do this because we're family. The call occurred. This morning, we awoke to a PowerPoint presentation titled Valid Reasons to Dislike Cousin. Using clips from the Zoom call, segments included Why is Cousin's Voice So Grating? A Music Theory Approach A Case Study Conversations That Provide No Value We're Thinking the Idea That There Are No Dumb Questions, etc. With the benefit of a couple of hours of hindsight, it was a very cruel takedown of her cousin's entire personality. My wife was furious. My eldest daughter and I lost our crap laughing. My wife is demanding I support her in punishing my daughter for bullying her cousin. I have refused because I feel this whole situation wouldn't have occurred if she didn't push the relationship. But I'm starting to have second thoughts because it was very mean. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your wife is the a-hole for forcing a 16-year-old to spend time with someone she doesn't like. The 16-year-old's response to your wife she didn't tell the cousin this, I presume. It is as hilarious as it is the fault of the adults forcing the relationship. I'm also not convinced that the cousin is down with this either, considering that the daughter is so clearly unhappy with spending time with her. Seriously, my 16-year-old self would have thrown a hizzy and stomped around. Opie's kid is clever as all get out. She put together her thoughts in a concise and organized way. Not day hall. Not day hall. Unless your daughter sends this presentation to her cousin, or shared it with anybody else, it isn't bullying. What is she to be punished for? Doing what your wife asked and gave reasons for why she dislikes her cousin? Having no chemistry slash a dislike for another person and not wanting to spend her time on that person? For having an opinion that differs from her mother's? Talk to your daughter and make sure her presentation is deleted, as it would be terrible should others get their hands on it. Your daughter is almost an adult, and your wife is pushing her away with her demands. By the way, your daughter sounds wonderful. Your wife, not so much. I'd also just like to say, I feel incredibly bad about laughing. She just started with a music theory lecture about some special discordant chord. 
Then, she had a video of the chord that immediately went into a Zoom clip of her cousin producing the same notes. I just couldn't hold it in. Tell her I'm impressed and like her more. There is only one thing you need to now do. Delete that PowerPoint and never tell. Think of it as a family secret. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you with the next one. Stay safe.